Hello and welcome to another Lightest and Best video. And this video is not going to be a video about just one knife, but it's going to be a video about lots of knives. This past week I went to Blade Show 2017 for the first time. It was an amazing experience. And I want to give you guys some of my impressions about a guy who's never been to Blade Show and just went to it for the first time. My impressions about what it's like, some advice for if you want to go uh, what I would recommend that you do and I want to show you the knife scores that I have here before you are some of the knives I purchased okay I did get a little carried away but as I tell my wife it's not for me it's for my public I need you guys to see some of these knives so I got a bunch of knives here well my first impression is and my first counsel is is buy the early tickets um, you can, the, the Blade Show is from Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Most of the activity that goes on is Friday, and there's a variety of knife manufacturers from all over the world. There were knife manufacturers from 20 different countries at this year's Blade Show. They're from South Africa, has a ton of knife manufacturers, but they're from France and Russia and um, Poland. I met a knife manufacturer from there, a lot from Canada, of course. Uh, Brian Ty and the Grimsmo brothers and Rod Olson are all from Canada. They have some great knife manufacturers up there. So they come in from all over and they'll make special knives just for Blade Show to show everybody what they've got. These are guys that sometimes have their books closed uh, completely or they have a waiting list of over two years to get a knife. So if you get in early uh, you can get one of their knives if you're under their table and you're the first one there and you have cash in your hand. So uh, they have an early bird ticket. The normal people usually get in around one or two, but you can pay a little bit extra to get in early at noon. And you must buy that because you need to get to those tables quickly before all of their knives are going. Uh, for example, this is a young knife maker from South Africa. His name is Van Wick. He only does his knives part-time. He only makes 10 knives a year, and I think he only brought two or three. And I was able to score this lovely knife that has a beautiful action, these micarta handles. And it was only one of the two or three knives that he bought because I got there early on Friday and I got to his table before anybody else did. But he sold out early because there was a high demand for his products. Well... I applied for a press pass with Blade Show 2017, and really, I got to be honest with you guys, because my knife channel is pretty new, it's been only in operation for about four months now, and I don't have many subscribers yet. I'm like the Rodney Dangerfield of knife reviewers, so they did not extend me a press pass just because I don't have many subscribers yet, but you guys keep playing it up and tell your friends to subscribe so that we can get uh, out of the Rodney Dangerfield phase. I worked hard for you guys, though. I went, and Friday was mostly my day where I bought all the knives that I thought that I needed. I maybe bought a couple extra Saturday, but really, I would go around to all the tables, and I would ask uh, knife manufacturers and makers that I was interested in interviewing if it'd be okay if Saturday I came by. And so I went by with my mic and camera and did interviews on Saturday, and over a three-day period, it took me a little while to upload everything, but I uploaded it all and did a little cute little thumbnail for it and under the auspices of Meet Your Maker. And so I had over 20 interviews, and I do this as a public service for you guys because I'm sensitive to the fact that not everybody can get away and take off work and buy a plane ticket, especially those of you on the West Coast or maybe up in the North to go to Blade Show. And so I wanted you guys to be able to live vicariously through my interviews and meet the actual people, see their faces, hear their voices, and see what great, humble, wonderful people that they are. Uh, I especially recommend, if you can't listen to all the interviews, Jake Hoback of Hoback Knives and John Grimsmo of Grimsmo Knives gave really interesting interviews. Jake Hoback is working on a project for NASA developing a knife that they'll be taking into space. He also explains in the interview uh, how his Hoback roller detent came about and how he integrates his faith into his craft. And John Grimsmo, it just it fascinates me, he and his brother Eric, and they talked about how they interact and their work 
And they also talked about something that fascinates me is they continue to keep the price of their knives in the $600 to $700 range for their base knives. People will immediately flip them onto the secondary market and they go for around $1,500 really on eBay. And so I asked him, why do you keep your prices so low when their secondary market value immediately is so high? So he talked to about that and he's just a wonderful, humble guy. And the baseline is, is that he wants the average guy to be able to buy his knives rather than just the 20% wealthy elite. And so John is just a kind, humble, wonderful guy. And so watch his interview. But you can watch all 20-something of how many ever I did. The one interview that I'm still holding back on is Brad Southerd. And Brad Southerd had the booth right next to John Grinzimo. And uh, he is working on his mini talk And he is working on a website to sell it himself rather than promoting it. You know, the regular Tolk got sold through a collaboration with Spider Co. It's much larger. The mini Tolk has got a smaller blade. It's only three to three and a quarter inches long. And it's very light, highly skeletonized. He's working on a website so that you can order it directly from him. And it has all the options. You can get various blade steels, different inlays. You can get anodization in different colors. And you can just go through and check all the boxes. And he's not going to allow... Uh, more people to enroll for the knives than he can manufacture them within a month period. So it's very well done. But he requested that I hold off posting the interview uh, for a week until he gets his website up and going. So I'm going to post a picture of the mini talk because I know you guys want to see it. But the actual full interview won't come up for a week. So you guys have something to look forward to. The pricing at Blade Show 2017 was interesting. And as I would imagine, most of the manufacturer gave deep discounts, and it's understandable because they're avoiding the middleman, Blade HQ and Knife Center, add extra money because they have to make profit. That's what capitalism is about. I understand that. But the knife manufacturers that normally sell through middlemen um, were selling directly, and they would sharply discount their product. For example, uh, Tashi Barucha, I got one of his mid-tech rowdies. He calls it high-tech, really, because... His OEM manufacturer is Jerry McGinnis. Oh, my gosh. And Jerry McGinnis has a wonderful knife. Here is a McGinnis uh, that I bought this week. It's the Mini XO in carbon fiber. And, oh, my gosh, it just flips like a maniac. So he's got this brilliant knife manufacturer functioning, just manufacturing his knives, which are brilliant design. Anyway, he doesn't call them mid-tech. He calls them high-tech. But, but anyway, they were $125 off. And they're actually less than half the price of his customs. So uh, the Rowdy from Tashi Baruch, and I don't have it here because it's getting a little work done on it, uh, is a wonderful deal. But So they'll deeply discount them, and all most of the manufacturers that way. The ones that weren't that way were the ones that have map pricing like Spyderco and Benchmade. However, Benchmade had a laser there, and they would do free laser engraving if you bought a Benchmade to sort of encourage you to do it. Um, other people didn't give a price break at all, and that was a little sad. Mazarin knives really missed the boat, I thought. They brought no knives to sell at the knife show. They just had a display of their models, but they wouldn't sell you a model. And Well, the way I thought about it was, well, okay, I can go home and order it on your website online, just like here. So I didn't really order a knife through them, but I got to see and touch their knives and flip them, so that was kind of nice. My heart got broken multiple times. Uh, Mueller from South Africa didn't make it. I talked to the other South African manufacturers and they said he had a personal emergency come up and he had a table there that I went by and it just had a little card with his name on it, but he didn't show up. And Andre Thorburn broke my heart too because he brought no knives to sell and his was one of the first tables I wanted to run by because I love his action and I, I was hoping to get one of his knives, uh, but I made an order for one of his knives. He... Um, has a A5, which another knife reviewer called an A3 Mini, but he said, no, there's no such thing as an A3 Mini. It's just an A5. And he put a double row IKBS in it, and he said, yeah, I've done that before. It's really hard, and I'm, I have difficulty getting it in mechanically, but he said, I'm going to try it, and if I can do it again, then I'll, I'll make you one. So I've got an order with Andre Thordern for an A5 with a double row IKBS. As you know... Um, Shira Goroff uses a multi-row bearing system that 
has double row ball bearings and uh, it is just as smooth as glass and and uh, I'm told that the Andre Thorburn with the double row IKBS bearings is really smooth too. He does it on his A3 and it's a little hard for him on the A5 but he's going to try it for me so hopefully he'll be getting that out and I'll be able to show you guys it also. The other thing is uh, amusing is that you really need to watch for ripoff artists. Uh, this is the CH3001, and you guys know that I love this. It's got a great action, and it only costs $53. There was an Asian guy with a table of cheap Chinese knives there, and I saw one of these CH3001s um, there, and I said, Oh, I love that thing. I want to pick up another one. And he was trying to sell it for over $200, and he was saying that he manufactured it, and he gave me his name, and I said, well, no, I thought CH Outdoor manufactured it, and he said, no, I manufactured it, and so it wasn't really real, and I, I guess you could call it a ripoff artist because you can buy it at DH Gate for $53, although one of my viewers wrote in and gave a heads up for everybody that I wanted to, to bring out. They don't do this in D2 Steel anymore. They're doing it in OS 8. And so I appreciate you guys when you give heads up for the other people in the community on our YouTube channel so we can know about that. But they're making it in OS 8 instead of D2 now. Just buyer beware that you know about it. But anyway, it's still got a great action. But one of the things I want to warn you about is that whenever you go, do your price... Uh, research before you ever go because there are some genuine nice humble guys that just are selling their wares and then they're mixed in with them some ripoff artists that will just be capitalists and in capitalism what is fair is that uh, a fair price is what a buyer is willing to buy it for but really when you can get it online for $53 price gouging selling it for over $200 I just don't consider to be fair oh well so my counsel overall is if you go, buy your tickets early so you don't have to stand in a big line to get your tickets because there are hundreds of people, probably in the thousands of people that go visit this thing. And the other thing is, is buy the uh, Friday early bird, get in at noon price because you want to get in to get the good deals before they're all gone or they're all picked over and the neatest, coolest knives are, are gone. Okay, well, I want to show you some of the knives, and the purpose of this isn't just to, it's sort of to whet your appetite, but I also want your counsel. I want you to give me feedback in the comments section of which knives you want me to review first. It's going to take me weeks to get through these knives, uh, so you guys give me your counsel. This is a pinstripe by Vandeventer. Uh, I bought five knives from five South African makers, and there's Van Deventer. He's a South African. This is by Clyde Chalinor. I've been stocking this knife for a long time. It's called the Talon, and oh my gosh, it's a great knife, and it has this eagle-looking eye, which is intentional to make it look like that. It's got carbon fiber inlays, just as smooth as glass. The Talon by Chalinor. This is a steam cant knife. It's called the Hornet. And steam camp, I don't know if you can see that, but on the inside of his liner, he puts a little cross on the inside of his liner of all of his knives. And it's got this beautiful action and beautiful blue anodization and a, a zirconium bolster. And that's a steam camp's knife from South Africa. This is a young, handsome knife maker. He's only been making knives for, for two years, and he only makes about 10 a year, one a month. So he puts his heart and soul into each one of these. This is the first Warncliffe. Not only is it the first model of Warncliffe, this is actually the first Warncliffe knife he's ever made, and it has the OD uh, micarta green handles, and it's really beautiful. And has a great action. So that's Van Wick is his name. And this is uh, Hericulus Blumieris. And I know I'm butchering his name. But uh, that's a cool knife. And he's got these uh, mother of pearl inlay like deer tracks on the handle. And he has a bolster that has this tooling and anodization that's really pretty. And that's uh, Blumieris. He's another South African guy. This is a knife by... Jason Browse called the Spectre, and it is a three-inch blade. 
he uses a steel handle so it doesn't cost as much as his knives and he doesn't have to use the insert because the handle is steel. It's still pretty light though because it's heavily milled out and of course just like all Browse knives it has a great flipping action. And this is a Jerry McGinnis knife, the Mini XO, and this is in carbon fiber with a gold anodized, well, I'd say that's copper bronze anodized uh, uh, lock face. And Oh, Jerry McGinnis just is a master of flipping action. So that's the Jerry McGinnis that I got, the Mini XO. This is a Zeba knife. And uh, this is one of the only knives where he doesn't put his devil tails on it. And uh, I'm blocking on the name of it right now, but it's just a little small knife. It's kind of a three and a half finger knife. It's pretty small by Michael Zeba. This knife I really like. Uh, this is a special color for the 50th anniversary. And this is a new knife called the XM1, excuse me, X1 Micro by Hogue Knives. And it is a button knife. So you just push this button and it falls and then you finish it off like that. And then it flips out like that. This is one of the coolest knives I got. And it's very cost effective. It only costs $140 at Blade Show. This knife is by Matt Diskin, and there's a story behind it. I bought this knife. This is a very inexpensive knife. It uses Aussate steel, and it's a copy of a model that Matt Diskin did, but this is just an inexpensive knife. It's manufactured in Taiwan. So anyway, I bought this knife, and as you can tell on this one, it has bilateral blood thumb studs normally, but the right thumb stud broke off. I flipped it really hard, and it hit the the steel liner in broke and so I went up to Matt and told him my saga that you know I bought one of his knives and I loved it it was it was recommended by Nut and Fancy he kind of deals in the, the less expensive knives but as far as one of my light uh, small knives that I just like to carry around and you can do anything with it and you don't worry about hurting it this was one of my favorite knives and that the thumb stud broke and he just pulled another one out of his pocket and gave this knife free to me so Matt Diskin is such a great guy, and so this was really a free knife that I got. And the next knife is a Carter Prime. This knife is designed by Mel Pardue's grandson for Ontario Knives, the same company that makes the Rat 1 and the Rat 2. And uh, it's really an interesting Warncliffe slash Sheepfoot's Blade, and I've been, it's been on my to-get list, and so it was at a good price from the manufacturer, so I picked one up, uh, yeah, by, by Carter, who's Mel Pardue, who's, Mel Pardue designed, as you know, about half of Benchmade's knives, it seems. This was an unexpected knife. This is a Brian Nadal. It's called the Mini Typhoon. It's got a three and a half inch blade, which is usually longer than I like, but the skeletonization that he did of the handle was too cool. I just couldn't pass it up. And then he has this cool pocket clip that doesn't even use screws. It's, it's, uh, he has a milled area that it fits between the two screws here in the backspacer. And he has this mint green backspacer that really pops. It looks so dope. The whole knife looks so great that I just had to get it. And it's now really one of my favorite knives. I'm so glad I got it. This, uh, Brian Nadeau knife. This knife uh, is the Orbit by Serge Pachenko and Gavin Hawk of GNG Hawk. This is one of my favorite knives too. It wasn't that expensive uh, as knives go. It's got the Hawk lock on it and this cool flipper that really deploys well and it's got the the uh, Serge Pachenko cleaver style blade. I did three interviews and three people talked about this knife. Gavin Hawk's interview, he talked about the Orbit. Serge Pachenko's interview, he talked about the Orbit. And then the OEM manufacturer, which is Millet Knives, talked about the Orbit too. So uh, I have three interviews about it. And this is the first knife actually that I did a review at. And I'll probably release it the same day that this uh, comes out so you can learn about that. And I got a small TIE fighter from Brian TIE and Friends. And it's another button lock. And I'm so happy that people are form, uh, making more button locks because they're so great. And it just is small, it's light, it's 2.5 ounces, fits well in the hand. So if you guys want me to interview that, review that one, I'll do that too. This one was a surprise. I'd never heard of this maker. It's Russian made, 
like the Shirogorov, and it has an action very much like the Shirogorov. It uses double row IKBS bearings. The, ma the maker's name is Andre Sanders, and this thing just is as smooth as butter. It just closes with gravity, and uh, it's light. It is a pocket sword. It's got a four-inch blade, but it was so nice that I just had to pick one up. And then Pena, I did not expect to, to purchase this knife, uh, but uh, I, I got talking to him and I said, oh, que suavecito, and then he said, oh, you speak Spanish. And we just did the rest of our talk together in Spanish. I'm bilingual, by the way. So uh, because I spoke to him in Spanish, he knocked $50 off the price, so I had to get one. The Pena knife, oh, it's a really great knife. So, so anyway, that's that's most of the score I had for Blade 2017. I'm going to be reviewing each of these knives. If you guys would do me a favor, I do this knife channel for you guys, the subscribers. So in the comments section below, if you guys would write the next knife you would like me to review, I will look at that and I'll try to get the ones that you guys are interested in up first so that you can learn all about them. And really, I do this channel for you guys, and so I want to service you. So yeah, in the comments section, write the knives that you like, that you're interested in, and the order in which you would like me to review maybe the one or two or three favorites that you have in mind. So thank you guys for watching the review. And if you haven't already subscribed, be sure and subscribe. You can be part of our community. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching all the videos. and. Uh, We'll get back with you on another knife review soon.